The lighting technique is as simple as using inner shadows for your subjects. My name is Calvin, but I go by Castlescope. Hi, hello, welcome to the Scope Fam. The first part of this tutorial is available on Patreon. It goes over how I made the base composition and got my base lighting. Thank you to my supporters over there. The link is in the description if you'd like to support me and check it out. The first thing that you guys are going to see me do is just go over to where I have my Bradley Beal group and my Bradley Beal layer. Now I'm going to drop down to the effects tab and first we're going to add our inner shadow. Often inner shadow is thought to be only for shadows, but it's really not. If you change the blending mode from multiply, which it's usually on, to linear dodge or color dodge, you can make some really nice highlights. We're gonna go ahead and use a light color that's not very saturated. This is because we're gonna be doing the rim light first and rim light is usually closest to white. So don't try to use a really saturated color off the bat for doing rim light. What inner shadows are gonna allow us to do is change the angle of light, the distance, size, and also the choke, but don't worry about that. What you wanna really focus on for the angle is where is your light really hitting from? Then for the distance, you wanna just if it's a rim light, you kind of want a low distance, definitely, because what's good about inner shadow is you can add multiple of these. The rim light, just keep it really light and keep it really thin because you want to have that nice rim light. It gives a nice effect. Now I'm going back over to the tab and see, I can add another inner shadow. You can really add as many as you want. It doesn't really matter. The second shadow is gonna be more saturated and a little bit darker because you wanna start getting those lights that are gonna actually be hitting on the inside of your mask, on the inside of the rim light. So you can even play with the distance and size a good amount and definitely just wanna go somewhere where you're comfortable and how you, however you feel how intense a light is, that's how it just is gonna play out because it's kinda of gonna come down to feel, but you can really do a great job and great job of controlling it with these two inner shadows. I don't usually use more than two layers for inner shadows, but if you want to, go ahead. Now you might be saying, okay, Cal, that's all cool and dandy, but look at these highlights. They're on the bottom of my subject. Light is not even gonna travel over there. An easier fix than you might think. So what we're gonna do is head over to the where you see effect. Then you're gonna right click and you're gonna actually just create layers from these inner shadows. If you can't see where you created your inner shadows at after, it's just cause you have to drag these layers to the top of your subject. Make sure that they're still clipped though. The reason that you can't see them is because you had added effects on and it was applying them after the fact. Once you register them as layers, Photoshop gets a little confused. If you ever forget the shortcut to make a clipping mask, I'll just remember that you can right click and go to where it says release clipping mask or create clipping mask. But the shortcut is holding down alt or command on the Mac. And then when you see the diagram pop up that's underneath the layer, when you're hovering underneath it, make the clipping mask. Next thing we're gonna do is add a layer mask so that we can actually see and control what we want to from these light sources. Two things I need you guys to install into your brains is that one, if you press D, you get to your default colors for Photoshop colors on the sidebar. And if you press X, this also changes the colors. The other thing is that black hides and white reveals. So black is gonna hide whatever you have on your layer and white will reveal when you have a layer mask on. So that's exactly what you guys see me doing right here. I'm just playing around between X and just my colors, my blacks and my whites. I also always use a gradient map on the top and this is so I can really see the true values. No hue, no saturation involved, just see my true values when I add a gradient map. I go in and I do the same thing for the rim light layer. Just being really cautious and aware of where my light source is hitting and how much intensity that I want to show from the light. It's really going to come down to your eye and what you want to do for your composition. But always try to keep in mind where your light source is coming from, how intense you want it to be, and what the supporting light behind it is. Highlights don't only run along the outside of a subject, so don't be fooled into thinking that or thinking that you're done once you do your inner shadow layers, no. So what I do is I go in and I add a solid color. I take a sample from just the scene and I'm gonna just use a solid color, something on either soft light or overlay, right? Then I'm gonna invert my layer mask with control I, and this is gonna allow me to just paint with white on where I want. So remember to invert your layer mask with control I, and then once you start painting on with white, you're gonna start revealing some of that color that's either on overlay or soft light. And you're gonna start getting those nice drifts off from the highlights, right? Cause highlights don't only hit on the outside. 
They're gonna travel to the inside parts as well. And this is what really starts to bring everything together. In designing, nothing is ever set in stone. Never be afraid to go back on your layers and adjust as you want to, or even adding light sources in that you think should be there. Whatever the case may be, don't be afraid to just get in your bag essentially and do your thing when it comes to lighting. Next I went in and I add a light and this is this light's gonna be supporting of my subject and it's just gonna be over the top so that I'm getting a little bit of that glow because when there is light sources, you kinda notice whenever you're looking at a cinema or film or whatever the case may be, you're gonna get a little bit of that bounce light off of the subject so it's gonna look like it's like bouncing off of them. This also adds another element of realism to your scene and overall it just makes it more interesting so let's just go over once more how exactly you're going to do this first we're going to add our first inner shadow usually this is going to be on linear dodge or color dodge and it's going to be very light it's not going to be very saturated either it's just going to be a very light color that's not very saturated you're also going to want to have opacities on 100 your distance is going to be very low for your rim light because it's the rim it's not going on the inside of your subject right then we're going to add our second light source. This light source is going to have more of a bigger size and it can even have more of a distance. But that is essentially how you're going to do that part. And we're going to actually create the layers from effects. This is going to actually make them layers that we can actually change and utilize with a layer mask. Thank you guys for tuning into this video. Hope this tutorial helps and share with a friend if it did. Also check out the first part of this video on Patreon. The link is down below or in my bio. Thank you guys for tuning into this video, man. Stay scoped. Peace.